previously on Tough Builds. There's a lot of things that you guys are actually seeing right now that really need to be repaired on this vehicle. And I'm currently about to be replacing everything, such as this back bumper. Then you have this big problem right here. I'm gonna try to take off this fender and rebend this fender, but I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna be able to bolt it back into right here because I'm pretty sure the frame got damaged down there. So if it did, I don't know how I'm gonna unbend that. Unless you guys can give me an idea if I haven't done it already. Maybe you can tell me how to unbend the frame so I can basically bolt it back on. I don't wanna cut into the frame and I don't wanna add another frame piece there. So if you guys can open up the bank. Tighten it with the ratchet first. What is up, TBC? It's your boy, Tough Builds, coming back at you guys with yet another video. In today's video, I actually want to discuss with you guys the things that need to be fixed on the 2006 Dodge Magnum SXT. Ordinary to get her looking as fresh as any possible. <laughs> The first one for the motor guys is definitely going to be the C member front support. Now this one really needs to be replaced ordinary for me to actually get this bumper changed. I really do need to get the bumper changed. It looks like crap. It looks like somebody hit it really hard in the front. Plus if your C member is very busted I recommend you to change that anyways. You won't be able to put your bumper on there without that guy. So make sure you guys go ahead and make sure yours is fine if you've been in a car accident or if you bought a salvage car from anybody on the street. Now this car did not have a front shield underneath it. So that's another thing that I'm most likely going to be picking up for this beast because the front shield is missing and it's busted. And well, if you don't have one of those, you know, rain, all this stuff from the road and everything, works its way up into your engine and it causes your engine to get really dirty really really fast so make sure you guys go ahead and pick up one of those if you don't have one installed on your car it doesn't help out with air it's already been proven so don't even bother taking it off just leave it on the next one on the list is definitely this bumper right here if you guys can actually see it has a big old gap between the light right here this is actually being held on by zip ties and also what they used was a coat hanger wire to hold this on, which we don't roll like that on TBC. We, we gotta fix that. This whole bumper just needs to be replaced. It's missing the Dodge emblem on the front. It's all scraped up. I don't wanna be driving with this. Plus all the clip-on parts that they actually were to hold these on with those little things or the screw. There's a screw and one of those little hold-on things that actually go with this bumper to actually hold it on to the frame. So I need to get a new one of that. It's only $93.99, so I'm thinking about just ordering that brand new. There is also two other parts on this. I don't know if you guys are gonna actually be able to see it, but you can kind of already tell. There's something missing right here on this section. And that is the front reinforcement and the bumper impact bar. The next thing will be motor mounts. This motor shakes from all hell and I noticed that it really does need that as well. Front headlights are the next thing on the list. This will probably be the last thing that I actually repair because I actually found a set of these and also the next thing on the list. So with the front lights and the rear lights it's only going to be $230 for all four which is really, really cheap and really, really good as a lifetime warranty. So if they die out or something happens to them, you can easily just ship them back. I would definitely keep your stock ones around just in case that does happen. But they're all LED. They do have some type of bulbs in there. So it's not completely full LED. The LED strip is actually up here. But you guys will actually see when I bring it home on that day. Now this one is actually located inside of this car. If you guys can actually tell already, I went ahead and I took apart this whole entire dash almost just to get to this ignition switch right here. And when you tap it just a little bit, the radio turns on, the whole gauge comes on and everything. So I already ordered the ignition switch already. I don't know if it's the module or not, but 
we're definitely going to find out when that day comes. I have all the pieces over here and especially everything just all around this car just trying to figure out what is the problem. Now this next one actually made me laugh a lot. Just seeing how badly people don't want to take their cars and go get them fixed or have the knowledge to fix it themselves. It's only a little bit of money. You don't need to spend a whole bunch of money just to fix these parts. This car is just in a bad condition guys so I'm hoping to bring it back up again and make it look really really good for somebody like you. Now I don't know if you guys are able to see that back there but it's actually a wire with some type of strap holding up the exhaust which is something hilarious guys. I thought this was just funny off the top of my brain. Look at that. Look how cheap these people are trying to hold up their exhaust. It's on the other side as well. Now this next one has something to do with the hood. If you guys can actually tell, I'm actually holding the hood up with a bar and not the actual hood struts. So that's something that I really need to change out. I'm not going to get that little thing that comes up right here. I'm actually just going to order the struts and get them installed probably soon. I'm hoping soon. Here's another funny one that I actually thought that this this is just a funny car being put together by people that just don't use their brain. So if you look right here, we have tape, right? Now this tape is holding together this whole strip right here. Keep in mind, these are not expensive. I can get these right now for 10 bucks for all around my car. This car is not cheap and it's not expensive to fix either. Steering wheel, another thing on this list. Why did I put it on this list if you guys are asking and it doesn't look that bad, this looks kind of faded or whatnot. But when I grab the wheel, I can literally turn this left and right and it just feels funny, it really does. I mentioned this one in my last video that this box right here, this intake box actually has a big gaping hole right here. So I'm actually looking for a new one, probably at a junkyard. I haven't really decided yet, but it's missing a whole bunch of other things. It's also missing the little strap thing that goes right here. It's another plastic part that you screw into this little guy right there to hold this box on. Next thing on the list is the trunk liner, which is the molding that goes right here to keep the water out from your car, or people like to call these weather strips, which they're, that's what they're called. They're really called weather stripping. Why did I put side rockers on my list? That's another thing that you, a lot of you are probably asking. And I'm going to tell you guys this right now. This side rocker actually has the black part that holds it onto the body. It's literally coming completely off. It's about to fall off if you can actually tell from that gap right there and the gap ahead over here as well. This thing is starting to fall down. On the passenger side, it does not have the side rocker. So I really need to get a new one for both sides. This next one is something you guys should really keep in your mind. You really don't want to have your car stopping anywhere or having your battery die or whatnot. So you definitely don't want that. Sorry, I'm sweating. It's 105 out here in Arizona right now. The garage is just not that cold. I had my car running earlier, so I got the heat from that going on and whew, it's hot out here, guys. But anyways, so the alternator is what feeds the electricity charge to your battery. So if you don't get the right electricity charge from that alternator, your engine will start bogging out. It will start shaking really crazy because it's not getting the right amount of voltage to keep that motor going. So if you eventually run out of that and that thing dies, maybe it could also be your battery. So always check your batteries as well. Make sure that they're getting the right amount of voltage being saved onto them and being charged by your alternator. Usually the best thing to do when you change out your alternator is go out and just buy a new battery if you haven't replaced it in a while. I would definitely do that so that way you know both of them have been replaced. I'm replacing this alternator because I noticed that it's starting to squeak. So I think the bearing inside of it is going out. I really just don't want to go ahead and buy a new bearing for it and replace it. So I'd rather just buy a new one and uh, most likely don't go to O'Reilly's. Your best bet would probably be AutoZone, they do come from a better manufacturer, not bagging on O'Reilly's, but some things O'Reilly's just doesn't 
selling good quality into some things they do. But since I'm already changing out the alternator, I'm gonna go ahead and change out that battery as well so I know that I changed both of them out. The negative wire clamp though is starting to claw like this. It's starting to get really pinchy. So instead of spreading it and breaking it even worse, I left it alone and I just unplugged it for right now because that ignition switch issue. But I just unplugged it for right now. Now for that new piece for the battery, is only eight bucks, so I'm not really tripping about that. I can easily get that repaired, put a new one in, cut the wire, put the new wire on, and then bam, you don't have to worry about it anymore. It's actually called a terminal, so you need to, <laughs> I need to make sure I tell you guys what they're actually called so you don't go searching, because you put clamp, I don't know, I don't even know if it will pop up, but it's called a terminal, so you might want to replace that terminal. I would usually do both as well. I just change them. As soon as I change my battery or my alternator, I change both of my terminals on my batteries. And I also mentioned in my last video as well, this one is the belt. I need to change out this belt. I don't trust people when they tell me they maintain their vehicle. To me, it just doesn't seem like they maintain this vehicle at all. I mean, I don't know. You guys tell me what you guys think about that. I mean, before I, when I brought it home, this engine was completely dirty. I had to clean it all up. I had to clean these things out. I had to clean that out. Like, it was just full of carbon. So, I'm glad I got all that done. But this belt right here, I'm definitely going to be looking forward to changing. Also, the radiator fluid was not topped off. It was actually really, really low. This is the last one on the list for right now, and this is the passenger side fender. I actually took out the big old bump that was right here on the side of it, but it still needs a new one. It doesn't have half the clips that really need to be on there. Looks like that side was really through a very major bad car accident on the front of the side of this car. The next thing after everything is done and fixed on this car, guys, which will also be the rear bumper as well, if you guys can already tell. I am most likely going to repaint this car either by myself or maybe I'll take it into a shop. I haven't really quietly decided on that yet, but I'm thinking about doing it myself so that way I know how well it's going to actually come out. I really want to give this or sell this car out in public again, so I want to make sure that every little thing is fixed on it. I don't want them to run into the same problems that I did. There's also a plastic trim piece on this side right here on the truck liner that actually holds the whole liner up on that little section right there and it's missing as well. So I need to have that replaced. I might even replace all these door um, plastic trims as well just to get them refixed. I'm also going to be redoing all the seats with black and red leather. So it's definitely going to look a lot better in here. I want to make sure that I do a lot of the stuff from the inside to the outside. So that way I can get it done as fast as I can. I'm checking things off on my list already. I already bought the ignition switch so I hope that works and it doesn't give out like this one did. I was going to buy 10 of them for like 30 bucks but when you buy cheap you're going to have to expect it to go out. So I might just end up putting a push button start in there. I'll buy the most expensive one and just have it installed. Oh, it feels good inside here. It actually feels a lot more cooler. I can actually take this off now. You can see all the sweat coming off my face, but it's okay. But anyways, guys, I just wanted to fill you guys in on this video. I posted it today, and the reason why behind it is because I want to let you guys know that I am really interested on in fixing this car, and I hope that you guys are too. Maybe if you guys own a Dodge Magnum, SXT, SRT, whatever the case may be, you guys will know how to repair some of this stuff. I'm just going to be doing it in segments, which is the, the ignition switch. I'm going to put all of that stuff back on so that way I can teach you guys how to take it back off again and put it all back on the way you took it off. But this car does miss a lot of bolts and things that are supposed to be holding stuff on. So I don't know what yours is going to look like, but mine is definitely missing quite some stuff. I might have to even order those online as well. But anyways, guys, let's end this video today. All right, guys, you guys already know the ending to the video. My name is Tough Bills. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, make sure you guys go ahead and smack that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the bell on the side. Give this video a big fat thumbs up. And share this with your cat, dog, bird, lizard, family, friends, 
anybody you guys can. Let's grow TVC. I will see you guys in the next video. If you guys have not yet picked up merchandise yet, make sure you guys go ahead and do that as well. That helps with the build. And once again, guys, I love you all and thank you for your guys' support. Peace.